uh, I'm a skater since I'm 15, and uh, as a skater, you see all public spaces and architecture, and especially in modern sort of cities, as a big playground with no regards for private property. So everything is just shapes to use and appropriate and do some tricks on it and meet with people and most of the time we stay for hours after skating and just talking and having fun so the um, public space is really the garden for the skaters all the time and uh, as an artist i also felt really attracted to architecture for the qualities of the materials the constructions material concrete wood uh, steel and uh, I was always really inspired by geometry and uh, the body proportions that are used in, in architecture that is really logical always. I, let me show you some pictures. Okay, so this is the first series. This is the series monuments. These are uh, photographs of uh, skate spots, actually, so potential skate spots of so every architecture that could be used by skaters to do tricks. And uh, at the same time, as an artist, I saw them as potential sculptures, like perfect sculptures, like always elevation of grounds and uh, the body proportion is always involved in it. So, uh, yes. It's, so I, I, I take photos of handrails, sidewalks, stairs, benches, banks, all these kind of shapes. Um, as you can see, and after when I show them, I put them in groups, so I try to really focus on the subject. But um, I don't take skaters on it, no people, nothing. It's just about the spot itself. Um, uh, for me, the main important thing as an artist is when you have an idea or a concept is how I do it after at the end. So how I print it, how I show it, what size, everything has a bit uh, to be a bit lost. This is a kind of series I did. Um, so I just wanted to share these photographs and to explain a little bit how I do it. So my main influences for doing these photographs was the photographs of Bernd and Hiller Becher, like a, a German photographs. I took photos of uh, industrial constructions and they, did, they, they, they brought to contemporary art the documentary aesthetic. You can see it's only a focus on the, on the subject and nothing around, so no composition. It's only the same way of showing things. So that interests me a lot to show the pictures I wanted to do. And at the same time, I was really influenced by skate photographs which is uh, also have a lot of rules. So the backgrounds around the skaters, how you can see the architecture around to understand where he comes from, where he goes. So that interests me a lot. So I try to make a mix between these two things like conceptual photography and skateboard photography. That's how I take, this is my picture again. Um, I take the picture with the objectivity so you can see why I focus and how I focus on the subject architecture. But you keep the presence of the body possible in the construction of the photo. So my angle and composition is made after the skate photography. And uh, the concept is more contemporary art. So with, with this series, I, didn't, I ended up with more than 900 pictures of architecture from public spaces and uh, that are not made to be scalable actually that is important and um, I want to say yeah I, I realize also that when I take them empty like this actually they really are empty this is most of the time the, this spot is offices or or parking lots that you go on Sundays or in the evening to be able to stay a bit longer. So if not, you would be banned from this. And uh, the more I read about the architects and urbanists that produces these kind of shapes, the more I found texts where they explain how they try to produce places for people to meet together, having relationships and uh, enjoy the architecture they produce. 
I think about people like Lawrence Halperin or Le Corbusier, of course, uh, Topo de Guan or the Akon Studio. Uh, I, I look a lot at their work and uh, it influenced me a lot. And yeah, I, I have the feeling it reveals something about our society to see how public spaces are actually made for us and at the end, people that really use it, not only for walking to walk, work or for consumerism, are banned from it. Um, oh, no, this is something else. Uh, what I wanted to share. Something is missing. Whoops. One picture is missing, sorry. I wanted to speak about a, a book of Raphael Zaka that influenced me a lot, but I, I missed the picture. And uh, the book is called Riding Modern Art, and uh, it's a collection of pictures of skaters doing skateboarding on modern art sculptures. And uh, I, I really like the idea of focusing on the physical experience of, of someone that doesn't always know something about contemporary art, uh, instead of, of showing how people analyze mentally sculptures. This is how we do it normally in contemporary art, and it has something different. It, it, it shows this physical experience first. And in a way, I think skateboarders have a sort of physical experience of every shape they use. Uh, yeah, this is my reference I talked about before of architects. I, talk, I look a lot like Lawrence Halprin, the landscape architect, which I find really amazing. And this is the Ember Keller in San Francisco. And uh, as you can see, it was used by many skaters also. And the fact that skaters use this, this kind of architecture from a, an architect that really wanted to produce a place to meet and live, I don't think it's really a coincidence. Oh, this is a picture I want to talk about. Uh, this is a book from Rafael Zaka. You can see a sculpture being written by a skater and actually produces something else at the end. So that leads me to the second series I did, or I started, which is called Sculpture 4, which is a series of minimal sculptures based on architecture. I installed directly in on site. So I, I choose a place first and I do a site specific sculpture and I install it illegally uh, on some places. And uh, this is the kind of sculptures. Uh, at the end, the sculpture always disappears, of course. And uh, what's left is a photograph. And uh, I do, as you can see, a poster of it, like an exhibition poster with the date of installation, the date of disappearing, and uh, that's it. What's left is a poster and, of course, a souvenir of what happened there. So the first sculpture was this one. It was in Wasserplatz in Berlin in 2015. And uh, I just wanted to try first. At the beginning, it was just the kind of sculpture I did for, for exhibitions, rooms white cubes and uh, I wanted to try what, what is it if I put this kind of minimal shapes in a public space uh, how will it react to the context how will the context react with it how will the people react if they don't know it's even supposed to be art it's just a shape that could be actually be made for it uh, from from the city but in the same time, it's not very, very usable. No. Mm. Well, this is another kind of sculpture I produce. So, it, at the beginning, as I said, it was only a, a, something I wanted to try with my sculpture. And uh, actually, since then, I, uh, I did mostly my sculptures are all outside. I did 16 since then and installed illegally in many cities, but mostly in Berlin, the city where I live in. So this is the kind of sculptures I did here in Simkeln. Um, the sites I choose are always a bit abandoned, open public spaces. 
I don't do it in the main city, in the middle of the city, but more in like rough areas. Firstly, because it's the kind of place you can do this kind of installation where nobody cares really about what you're doing there. If you install uh, something or not, if you stay there for hours. And uh, at the same time, uh, I had the feeling it has a poetic uh, meaning, this abandoned places, kind of wastelands with rest of architecture from before. For example, this place you can see Vasatoplatz used to be a fountain so long, long time ago. And um, yes, yeah, this is this, another sculpture I did and it, it's a dead end path at the end. It was to, uh, a free ride path before under a bridge and at the end it's just a dead end. I see something really poetic in this unusable as areas. This is also a closed entry actually, and you just have three stairs left where you were supposed to be able to come inside the building and it's closed. So you have this kind of area that no one uses, but maybe homeless people and skaters and myself. And besides this poetic and a bit melancholic aesthetic of this kind of places, uh, I had the feeling it has something libertarian also. It's a place where everyone is welcome. Everything is possible as I should prove it with my sculptures. And the way you use it uh, is really free. I mean, normally you have design in the streets that shows you where to sit, when to sit sometimes also, how to sit and this kind of stairs. There's no way of using them. You can lie on it or sit, eat, skate, doesn't really matter. So I had the feeling it was a really space of freedom inside the cities. Uh, to me, this uh, wastelands uh, reminds me a lot also from German Romanticism feeling that uh, like this very, very well-known picture of uh, Caspar David Friedrich it's uh, all about, for, for me, sense yourself living at that very moment in front of the world. And if you stand in the middle of a big wasteland in a city, I hope you can feel yourself really living this right second. So this is the thing I try to produce, I think, with my sculptures, to make the people, the inhabitants that walk by, maybe stop for a second and uh, feel themselves living a moment of freedom in these areas. And uh, I will finish with one of my last installation. It was a uh, uh, multiple of seven poles uh, that I installed in one park where I just put it in some corners I found interesting of this park. This is a really abandoned park and uh, normally very, very dirty. And uh, I put like seven times almost the same shape, but you can see some differences because of the proofs. I, I leave them like this. I don't, didn't really care if they were perfect or not. So you have the feeling crossing all the times the same shape at different weird spots of the park, like a reminiscence, a souvenir all the time. And maybe you might think after the three or third, uh, third or fourth sculpture you meet. So what's that all about and maybe yeah ask yourself some question or just sit on it or just ignore it maybe so yeah that's it thank you pierre it was interesting uh, i would give uh, the space to the audience to say to ask something to comment to, to don't like to like i have a question i also have a question after you okay Sanya. So which, okay thank you hi pierre i'm hi. Sanya. i'm an architecture student Hello, i really love your presentation i think we also have some comments with our hobbies. I also uh, am, I'm also into uh, photograph and uh, snowboarding more, not skateboarding. 
Uh, so I would really love to ask you a question uh, about photographing and where do you find your inspiration? It, like it is um, uh, spontaneous, like uh, or or where where you cross your street and just spot a, a cool angle of one, uh, some building or a place and you just spot a picture. So that will be like my my question. Where do you find your inspiration? Because I really love your your photos. Thank you a lot. First, um, inspiration uh, comes from uh, different things. I think mainly from working a lot, and uh, I, I I'm always searching for shapes of sculpture as possible. Like I think every artist, so I do sketches and, and uh, small shapes and models, and I look a lot at sculptures, books. I mean, Richard Prince helped me a lot. Vito Acconci and his Acconci studio uh, was a big inspiration. So I look all these things. And at the same time, when I walk around or skate around, I look at all these places and I note them. So I have a collection of possible sculptures, like abstract forms, and I have a collection of possible places. And uh, at one moment, I try to make them fit together. So I have one place, I think, okay, now I really want to do something here because I, I see a potential in this place to become some place, something. And I try to find the, the, the right place for it, the right shape. So it's inspired between my own inspiration and the architecture around of the place itself. So I will always try to make it fit in a way, a bit camouflage style. So it, that it might be made by the city for it, but not completely, so uh, you can stop on it. Uh, yeah, it's a mix of these three things. My heroes, my inspirations, and the place itself. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next, uh, who said Natalie? No, Natalia. Yeah, I was... Uh, and I don't know if I can formulate this question so it's understandable, but I will try. Um, I've been thinking a lot um, lately why we, like uh, architects, artists, people who are working in this field, like in the um, creative fields um, of the uh, art, why we are interested and why do we like this kind of abandoned area aesthetics? Uh, maybe I'm not expecting from you like a clear and direct answer and for me personally it's also about the feelings and what I saw in your works was very inspiring because I have felt same moods that you have shown in the in your pictures and in your works and it was really like um, interesting to observe how how people from different parts of the world have uh, somehow similar things to share but uh, I would ask you if you can try and uh, maybe you have also uh, thought about it and maybe you also tried to find this answer in your mind why do we like this aesthetics is it only aesthetics is it a context is it the, like our I mean uh, ability of the artist to see something somewhere which is not visible for everyone or what is your drive in this kind of uh, uh, places. I mean, you mentioned that uh, in uh, one of the photos that this place for you was more poetic, if I understand it correctly. And why do you think it's a poetic? Thank you. Uh, poetic is a bit hard to, to explain, probably. I mean, it's always very subjective. Uh, to me, having three stairs leading to nothing, it's the most poetic thing I could find in the city. I and mean, it has something beautiful just leads to nowhere uh, or up in the sky I and mean, you can see so many poetic things um, so but everyone sees a poetic where he wants i have the feelings when i look at the wasteland to feel more if I, as if i look at the sea it's the kind of aesthetic i like but i don't know maybe i grew up there because of this post apocalyptic aesthetic maybe we grew up with um, to me, when I, when I try to think about this, why, why are you so obsessed with this kind of areas? Of course, it was because uh, as skaters, we 
search for this kind of places because it's kind of place we don't get kicked out so quickly. And uh, that also reveals something. It's a kind of place, what I, I told before, it's a kind of place of freedom because it doesn't belong to anyone. It's like a no man's land, really. Because it was something before, it might become something one day, but it's in between two states. And I think this in between two states is very appealing. So you can project yourself doing something there or just living something there. Is that a response? Yes, thank you very much. Very yeah, interesting. Sorry. I think we're starting to touch the topic of mood about our public spaces. And I think it's very interesting that what you said, no matter where, where we come from, what Natalia said, that like I can find the same images that you took uh, in Skopje, like, or maybe we can find the same images in Tbilisi, or like we feel like we are now all living in kind of same city because like those spaces are everywhere. And uh, when you speak about France or Berlin, you speak about uh, Paris, you speak about Eiffel Tower, and no one speaks about these spaces that you can find everywhere. Okay, uh, if someone from the participants, I would like, like to hear the participants speaking and having comments about this topic. Can I also say something? Yes, of course. Uh, about these uh, types of places. Uh, as a skateboarder and as I used to, was a youngster who was doing graffiti and different types of arts, uh, do, these places kind of uh, invite us to be free, be safe from the surrounding because we get kicked out of everywhere. And that's why these places for us have this kind of, let's say, poetic mood because uh, it depends of your own what you can do there plus the feeling of freedom and not getting bothered so you can go taking pictures do some art just spend the time there and you film like in your own kingdom let's say so i think that's why we like these places plus the aesthetic of them is kind of mixed with old and new and i think uh, this is another moment that we like just my opinion. I would also uh, like to underline what Pierre said that uh, nobody cares if you put a sculpture there, but everybody would care if you put it in the main square. So like, uh, I can do whatever I want. I can put whatever I want. And this is, I think, also one amazing, uh, amazing line that, that you said. And another thing that you said is temporary uh, because uh, when we are working with Malem on urban intervention, everybody is saying to us, but why are you doing that? That will be destroyed like in two months or in one month or in one day. And we're saying uh, it doesn't matter. It's an experiment in space. How long it lasts? It's okay. Like we believe in people. If you believe in people, like this thing will start changing about destroying. And even if they destroy it, it's all right. So this is another very important thing that you mentioned temporality mm -hmm. of the urban intervention that we're not also, doing some yeah sorry uh, they also inspire stay there and inspire other people to do similar things so if mm -hmm. more people do things like this they will stay longer yeah okay so even the fact Sorry, I, I could just say about uh, staying longer or not. If it doesn't stay long, it doesn't matter, actually. As long as it's disappeared, you can just do the next one. So uh, it's about the experience. So uh, mm. as much experience we have, the best it is. So uh, if it's just one day, that it's like this, that you just do the next one, and it's great like this. So. And I also wanted to add uh, about the, the, this uh, spaces, uh, wasteland. It's a bit more politic, but being this kind of places is between two times and uh, state, you get out for a second of this uh, normal behavior of the city when you just go to work or consumerism or you are not in representation of, of the economic uh, state of your of your land is just griefs being... economic griefs exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah 
is like we can call it urban monastery like when you go in peace and being monk <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Pierre uh, one question for you uh, is it the feeling when you put these uh, sculptures these places that are not legal kind of the same when you go to let's say filming missions or doing some art on the street that is kind of illegal I think it's kind of the same yes it's definitely the same a lot of people tell ask me if i'm doing street art or contemporary art or only skate spot for my friends uh i don't have the answer to this and uh, for me yeah, it's all the, the same it's not playing in the same context it doesn't have the same concept behind but i don't really care and it's just at the end it's probably street art or it's probably only skate spot for my friends doesn't matter Mm. Okay. And do you know about Magba uh, Museum in Barcelona? No, of course. Yeah, it's. I would like to share this with students. Uh, this is Magba Museum. Uh, it's in Barcelona. It's a very nice uh, space. Um, it's by architect Richard Mayer, and uh, he didn't plan to make it a space for skate or a skate park. Because like everybody thinks a skate park is this thing with holes and everything, but in fact, it turns out it is, it is one of the most world popular places. I mean, skaters, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, like nice. you can find many skaters here and it's just like this flat space and this is up and that there is here one ramp. I don't know if I can find a good picture. Like this is one ramp and then you go up. It's just this, this is the space. And it becomes the, one of most important public spaces in Barcelona. So, I mean, it's not that we are focusing now on skate so much. We just invited skaters to see different perspective and to understand like how architecture can become meaningful for, for different groups of people, sometimes unintentionally, sometimes intentionally. Yeah, so. This uh, kind of thing. Uh, this thing with Magba, yeah. it's kind of uh, legal in some periods of the day uh, to skate there or the whole day. I don't know. They were changing it's... some things. Uh, the skaters are allowed to spend time there. It's not like they, they're getting, getting kicked off in front of the space. That's why this place is so popular. Uh, uh -huh. becoming Plus, there are a lot of yeah, important yeah. skate spots around. So. It's they, like they, try, they try to change it right now because it's too much skaters all the time here. Mm. Yeah. Too much garbage but the stuff. energy that you feel when you come to this space is like just this wide building and this black ground and like, vroom, like you feel the movement of skaters and louds and sounds is like youth energy, like, oh, you know, you feel the, the vibe. Yeah. And uh, I think this is very good. But uh, for the noise it's good that it's just museum so you don't uh, like making noise to anybody maybe from the surrounding there are like residential i don't know but that's a good thing uh, that there is just museum yeah. actually the similar example is uh, the casa da musica as well by oma in porto uh -huh. it's very it similar is... casa da musica yes, the example i wanted to say I just put uh, in our shared folder some uh, examples like this, so you can check it after the event. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that Casa di Musica is Kasha, I don't know how they call it, is also skatable space. I've been here, but I haven't seen skaters, but it's also very cool design of the space because it's all like, um, like a hill, a little bit like going up. It's curved. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Comments before we are closing this discussion? Okay, guys, uh, thank you, Pierre, for uh, joining us. Uh, it mm -hmm. was very interesting. Uh, you started working something here.